Hi, my name is Josh Hahn. I work with Turn Bicycles and I want to talk to you today about commercial logistics and cargo bikes and why it makes sense to make the switch from delivery vans to cargo bikes. So there are a bunch of companies that are doing this already. Uh, DHL is one. You can see they're using a front loader uh, by bullet. Domino's. This is Domino's in the US. They're using a rad power bike. And uh, this is from New York City. Uh, there's a company called Dutch X and they are doing logistics for Whole Foods. Uh, and they are using a turn bike with a Carla Cargo trailer and you can see you can really load it up. Benefits for your business. Let's get right to it. So number one, cargo bikes are faster. There are more routes uh, to get to your destination. You can avoid traffic, you can go through uh, back alleyways or side streets, uh, even bike paths. So you, there's a lot more ways that you can avoid traffic. You also don't have to spend time looking for parking, right? So imagine you're in an urban center, Manhattan, San Francisco, London, and you need to park. The reality is that there is no parking, and so you double park. Um, if you can find parking, it's a ways away, and then the delivery driver then has to walk to and from the uh, destination. That's all wasting time. So you really can get around a lot faster in a dense urban city uh, with a cargo bike. Uh, there's a UK study. Uh, there's a company called Pedal Me. Um, they did it with a university, and they found that they could deliver roughly 60% faster than vans uh, in central London. So it's a really a huge difference. Number two, a cargo bike is much cheaper to buy. So this is a, a Ford Transit. Um, I think my perspective today is going to be uh, a bit more US centric. So we're using dollars and miles and uh, US pricing. So a Ford Transit is $45,000. Um, a commercial grade cargo bike is, let's say, roughly three to five thousand. Um, and I say commercial grade because I, I think there's an important distinction between uh, a low cost consumer uh, bike and commercial grade. So when I say commercial grade, I mean specifically these things that we think are critically important. So number one, the frame and fork are tested. To the, to the claimed cargo capacity by a third-party lab. So there are a lot of uh, companies out there claiming 180 kilograms or 200 kilograms, uh, but they haven't been tested by a third-party lab. Uh, and this is really important because if you are day in, day out, eight, 10, 12 hours a day moving cargo, um, a bike is not gonna last unless it's really built for purpose. So an example of a test lab that we use is EFBE. They're, they're based in Germany. And also really important is what test standard did you use? So as far as we know now, uh, there is only one uh, cargo bike test standard and it's only in draft form. Uh, it's from Germany. Um, the, the founders at EFBE helped to write this. So, so they, they know how to test for it. Um, but this is really the only cargo bike test. So anybody who claims, hey, I can carry this much weight, you have to ask, what test standard did you use? Um, thirdly, something that's really important is uh, testing of the battery and charging system um, to an international standard. So in the US, we have UL, um, Amazon, as far as we know, has, is now asking its uh, suppliers to meet the UL standard. So this is really important um, because the, the amount of power in, a, in, in the average e-bike battery is equivalent to, if my math is correct, roughly six hand grenades. So think of that much power in a single e-bike battery. And so if you think of a, a warehouse where you have 10, 20, 50 batteries charging, it's a huge amount of power. And those batteries have to be made to a certain standard. 
So we use Bosch. Uh, we are very confident in Bosch's uh, quality and safety protocols. Um, but it's so important because if a fire breaks out, um, it, you know, where you have all of your vehicles stored, it's, it's terrible. And even worse, right, if, if you have people living upstairs. Uh, in New York City alone this year, there have been more than 150 fires started by, let's say, electric vehicles, batteries. Um, and so this is, a, this is a very serious issue. So have, having a bike, when you say it's commercial grade, it means that they have met a certain safety and testing standard. And as a purchasing uh, agent, you need to ask what standard they met and see the documentation. Also, number four, uh, components need to be chosen for durability and easy maintenance. You know, if you, if you are an e-bike that, that gets ridden 5, 10, 20 miles per weekend, that's very different than a bicycle that is being ridden 100 miles per day, right? So that's really important. To get back to why you should make the switch from vans to e-bikes, Number three, the, num the third reason is lower cost per mile. Uh, and here on my chart, I've compared a di your typical diesel van, so a, a Ford Transit, an electric van, and a cargo bike. And you can see that uh, there's a huge difference, right? So for a diesel van, I've been, I, I'm trying to be conservative here, and remember these are US-centric costs. So uh, I've used 450 a gallon. Right, so that's well that's that's low even for now uh, in the UK right it's roughly uh, well the exchange rate is not great right now but it's let's say roughly seven dollars a gallon um, so these numbers would would skew even further um, but you can see that you know a cargo bike costs almost nothing to run uh, and I've also used a very high maintenance number so I've used about $900 a year for maintenance for the cargo bike. So that's a lot. Um, but even so, right, the, you know, it's, it's more than a 15x difference between a diesel van and a cargo bike, um, just in your running costs. Number four, parking tickets. So this is something that uh, I think you might not think about, right, as, as part of your operational costs for a van, uh, but they are very significant. So try and guess how many tickets, for example, a FedEx or UPS might get per year in New York City. What number do you have? And how many dollars does that work out to? I was pretty shocked to see these numbers. So 2019 New York City, UPS. 348,000. FedEx, over 149,000 tickets. And dollars? Did you have this dollar number in your head? I didn't. Um, I mean, this is one year in one city. Think about how many cargo bikes you could buy just with your parking fines. So it's a, it's a huge number. And right, so all of these things have to go into your calculation of how much does it cost me as a company to operate one delivery van? And how much would it cost to replace it with one, two, three cargo bikes? So um, next, easier hiring. Right, so a lot of companies now are having difficulty hiring enough drivers. Uh, that's, a, that's a huge issue in many, many countries, US, UK, right? So uh, we've, had, we've had numerous delays on bikes just because we had to wait on trucking to get, uh, to get from Long Beach to Illinois, our warehouse, right? But UK as well. Um, so if you, uh, if you think about the labor pool and the number of potential bike riders versus the number of potential van drivers, you can see that um, you know, your labor pool is going to be much larger if you're using cargo bikes uh, instead of vans. And additionally, right, if, if you know, 
as a high school student, uh, if I can if I can make eighteen, nineteen, twenty dollars an hour riding a cargo bike and doing deliveries, that's pretty good. As a twenty five year old uh, with a van license, that's that's not so great. So potentially you can you can lower your labor costs as well. Number six, boosted marketing in your community. So if you have uh, nicely logoed uh, cargo bikes running around your neighborhoods, that's great marketing. So whether you are, uh, you know, Frank's Pizza um, or you are DHL, uh, you know, a, a your friendly neighborhood or your friendly neighborhood postman. Um, it's great marketing uh, to be on a cargo bike. Uh, you're friendlier. Uh, the communities see you as much, you know, not contributing to traffic, uh, noise, pollution. So all of those are great things. So there's also a, a really great marketing benefit. And number seven, this is, this is one of the big ones. Um, you have the opportunity to massively decarbonize your operations. If you are a logistics company today, uh, probably the overwhelmingly large part of your carbon footprint is your, uh, are your delivery vehicles, so your vans. So every van, if you drive it 30,000 miles per year, um, is pumping 44,000 pounds of CO2 into the atmosphere. It's a huge amount, and that's one van. So imagine 10, imagine 100, imagine 1,000, imagine 10,000. Um, so uh, if you want to reduce your carbon footprint of your company, the best way to do it is to switch vans to cargo bikes. There's just, there's, <laughs> there's just nothing else to, that will even come close. Um, so it's, it's amazing what that, that simple switch will do. And number eight, happier investors. Um, so this is a quote, or these are two quotes from Larry Fink. He's the CEO of BlackRock, uh, the world's largest fund manager. And he says, every government, company, and shareholder must confront climate change. And he says, we are asking companies to set short, medium, and long-term targets for greenhouse gas reductions. So his perspective is, uh, it's pretty standard these days. And he even goes on to say, you know, we're not doing this because we're environmentalists. We're doing it because this makes uh, good capitalist sense. Um, and the reality is that uh, everybody wants companies to decarbonize. And so if you can decarbonize your operations by switching from vans uh, to bikes, that is going to reflect well on your stock price going into the future. And uh, I realize that this slide is incredibly cynical, um, but I am a big believer in economic incentives to drive behavioral change, period. So. If this is what it takes to get companies to make the switch, I'm all for it. Benefits for your communities. Number nine, less traffic. Uh, I grew up in LA. As anybody who knows, uh, LA traffic is horrendous. All you do is spend all day thinking about what time it is and what the traffic's like. So, you know, I think anybody who lives in a dense urban city has a lot of the same issues, whether that's San Francisco, whether that's New York, whether that's London, whether that's Jakarta, right, whether that's Bangkok, whether that's Taipei, right? All of these cities have the same problem, which is bad traffic. So just by way of example, there are, or there were 97,000 delivery trucks on the road in New York City. Um, and the average speed of traffic in Midtown is 4.7 miles per hour. So that's barely faster than walking. And the average uh, speed of traffic in London is higher, but it's only eight miles per hour. So it's still really low. And so you can think about just like, if you could get 10, 20% of the delivery vans off the road, 
and replaced with cargo bikes, uh, what would traffic be like? It would be a lot better. And number 10, better air quality. Air quality is one of the biggest issues uh, that we, uh, as people living on the planet, now face. It is a leading cause of premature death, and it doesn't matter whether you are in a developed country or a developing country. It affects all of us. Uh, the WHO estimates 4.2 million premature deaths per year from outdoor air pollution. And a recent study uh, by Harvard and a number of uh, UK universities uh, using different methodologies uh, shows that up to one in five deaths worldwide can be attributed to burning fossil fuels and the air pollution that it causes. So it's a huge problem. It's one of the hugest issues that we face today. Uh, and diesel exhaust, it contains carcinogenic substances, but then it also contains particulate matter. But it's not just exhaust. That's the scary thing. It's also the dust created by brake pads. So PM 2.5 particles from brake pads and tires as well. So the rubber dust that's created from tires just wearing out um, is, is a massive issue. And even beyond that, uh, this is something new that, that I've just found out about is a compound called 6PPD, which tire manufacturers add to their tires uh, to protect it from ozone. The problem is that 6PPD has been tested to be highly toxic to fish. So we have all of this rubber dust that's lying on our roads and then it gets washed into the sewage systems that then goes into the rivers and then washes into the oceans, um, affecting marine life. So it's a huge issue um, that we face. And uh, I've talked to Schwalbe, uh, our tire supplier, about this issue. They are uh, one of the largest tire, uh, bicycle tire manufacturers in the world. They are aware of the issue. They are looking into the issue. Um, but what they said was, you know, it's, you know, we're studying it, but it's not so easy to replace this compound. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, in, di in addition to air quality, it's, you have this compound washing into our oceans. So all of these are big issues when you're talking, when you're talking about delivery vans. And it's something that we could solve easily with a switch to a cargo bike. And finally, we have benefits for our planet, right? And, and the reality is that we live uh, on, a, on a planet with finite resources. Um, it, we didn't used to think that way, uh, but we're all realizing that now. Um, and if you look at uh, the comparison of a diesel van and a cargo bike and just look at the amount of weight it can carry, uh, you know, a diesel van can't, it can't even carry one times its own weight. Right, it's, it's about 0.8. Um, while a cargo bike can carry 5x, sometimes 6x, its own weight. So you can think of a cargo bike as the soldier ant of the uh, transportation world or the logistics world. It's incredibly efficient, right? It doesn't take a lot of material uh, to, to do a big job. And you can see that in, in terms of how much CO2 it takes to manufacture a van versus an electric cargo bike, right? It's a, it's a massive differential. And then you look at the amount of CO2 it takes to operate um, just on a, a mileage basis, a van versus a cargo bike. Um, and so if, if, if we as citizens of planet Earth want to optimize our use of resources, it really just makes so much sense to make a switch to cargo bikes. So this is the part where I get to shamelessly plug turn and spend a little bit of time telling you about what we have. So we've been designing and thinking about and manufacturing cargo bikes for about five years. And we have a range of different products uh, for different types of uses. First, we have the turn quick haul. This is kind of our, our lightweight bike. It can carry up to 
160 kilograms of uh, payload. Um, and this is perfect for food delivery, right? You can, you can have a stack of pizzas on the back. You could have drinks on the front. Um, so light delivery, uh, that's the turn quick haul. For mid-sized deliveries, you can think about the turn GSD. Uh, it has a cargo box on the rear and on the front. Uh, they are lockable. This is the bike that New Zealand Post uh, is using now um, to deliver mail. And this bike can carry up to about 300 liters of cargo, so it's, it's pretty good. And finally, for uh, large packages, uh, you, you can think about um, using a trailer. Uh, the trailer is modular. Uh, this, is, uh, this can carry about one and a half cubic meters of cargo. So that's, it's getting up into the range of full van replacement uh, with a, with a single unit. And this is the, this is the, uh, the, uh, combination that we're using in New York City, uh, for Whole Foods. If this sounds interesting, um, then you can, uh, contact us here. And I'd really like to close by saying that, you know, this type of cityscape is not, uh, my ideal of a place that I would want to live um, or a place like this that's just slammed with buses and cars and vans and there's traffic and you know a, a place that I would want to live looks more like this with blue skies clean air some green space and um, you know the, the way to get to a future like this is pretty simple um, one of the things that we can do is to get vans off the road and replace them with cargo bikes. Thank you very much for joining me, and I hope to be hearing from some of you.